Hi everybody, this is Barry with another video for the Breck After School Music Program Online. This is going to be a video about vocals, about singing. Uh, it's called Singing What's Important, Attitude and Philosophy. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about what's on people's mind when they're singing and also what singers go through emotionally and personally in order to become the best singers that they are, that they can be, and uh, also like what practice techniques and what, you know, how, how, how to sort of look at the process of becoming a better singer. All right, so the first thing uh, that I want to say is that, you know, there are lots of different kinds of singers, and singers have the ability to inspire people, they have the ability to call them to, act, to action, they have the ability to move them emotionally. Um, there's a lot of power that a singer has when they're in front of people, but a lot of singers get caught up in their own personal sense of self-doubt and their sense of uh, whether they're they're good enough or whether they're doing a good job or whether they're deserving or, or all these different things. And uh, part of what we're going to talk about today is, is, is that journey, um, personally and emotionally, and the journey toward mastery. Because the journey of a singer and the journey of uh, learning how to sing better should be one, first and foremost, about personal mastery. It should be about goals that you have for yourself. Because it's really yourself that you really need to, to, to please and to impress and to... to um, to reach into in order to find the things that you really want to express to people. Okay, so we have a perception in our mainstream culture that um, singers, that there are, you know, certain kinds of singing is good, certain kinds of singing is bad. Now, you look around, there's all kinds of different singers. Uh, there are people like um, Ariana Grande, who's like a great technical vocalist. Uh, but there are also other people, I don't know if you know the singer Lou Reed from back in the 70s and 80s, has a very gruff voice. Um, there have been lots of different singers over the history of singing uh, who had different ways of reaching their audience with their really personality that, that, that shone through because of the way they approach singing. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a completely separate gauge of, qual of quality based on people's personal opinions, and then there's another one based upon the commercial success of somebody, how many records they've sold or, or streams they have or whatever, how popular they are. And then there's another one um, about, like, how, about longevity, about how long their work lasts, how many decades into, you know, past their, their own life even sometimes their music continues to, to reach people and to inspire and to touch people. So there are so many different ways that we gauge quality and sometimes it's, you know, what we're going for in the moment isn't necessarily the whole story. Uh, so the, the thing that you really want to do more importantly than anything else is to sing like yourself. To sing like yourself, um, first of all, that, that's, it sounds like a trite thing to say. It's, you know, well, of course you're going to sing like, you're also going to sing like. Well, we're often trying to emulate our heroes, which is not an unhealthy thing. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But also we're, always, we're often trying to sing in a way that we think singers sing or a way that's singerly or musical or, or, you know, represents the style of music that we're trying to sing. And, you know, there's a place for that. And at the same time, you still, within that, need to find y the way to be yourself. And, um, again, you can't get away from it. You're going to be yourself. But what I mean by that is you want to sort of allow your influences into you and sort of let them mix in your consciousness. And when you sing... You want to let all of that come through, but not try to be anybody else other than yourself. Okay? <clears throat> Remember, a singer is a storyteller. We're out there. We're conveying to other people an emotional journey, a story that we are either going through in the moment, that we've gone through, or the author of the song has gone through, or all of those things at the same time. Uh, so, you're like... I, I, like in my notes here, I said, not just of the lyrical story, but of the story and the melody, and also the story of the emotional arc of the song, and for the singer in that moment. Uh, emulating other singers, like I said, is a step toward finding your own technique. It's very cool to really, really dig into somebody else's singing and listen to every note and every inflection and every bend and every flavor, regardless of what instrument, but the voice is the most expressive of them. And if you do that, you really find nuances in each different singer that you can then bring into your own technique and bring into your own style. And the more different people you listen to and you study and you examine like that, the more your 
personal voice is going to expand and it's going to grow and it's going to develop in the ways that naturally are meaningful to you because that's what's going to happen. You're going to get better at, at what you like doing. Um, and the more different people from different eras and the more different genres, the better because you're going to get more and more insight into what a singer can do with their voice. Okay? So, and another important thing that I wanted to bring up is that some singers we think of as having just a, a magical, natural, God-given gift and ability. And I'm not saying that's not true. What I will say, however, is that there are people that have that gift and have that ability and for whom it's effortless to start as a singer, but that don't have the discipline to actually maintain that or to grow that or to develop, to develop that to its potential. Whereas there are other people who don't necessarily have what they or even others perceive as a particularly pleasant or beautiful or musical voice. And yet through work and through um, practice and through development of technique, but most of all, through examining the truth in themselves and what they want to actually express, they can find a way to use their voice and to get their voice to be useful in the way that they want it to. So I think that's an important thing for everybody to realize. It's, it's not a magical thing. It really, it, it takes work and with work you can get better. Everybody can. All right. So I want to just say that practice, you know, we hear the word practice and a lot of people are like, oh, I got to practice, you know. But practice is a word that's used in a lot of different ways. Practice is used for martial arts. It's used for doctors. It's, you know, a lot of people, when somebody does something and they do it well, we call it practicing that. So when we say to practice, I mean singing. But I also mean developing your technique. I mean doing exercises. I mean working on the, the parts of the songs that are that are a little bit difficult and a little bit just elusive for you to, to hit the way that you want to. Working on that, going over that those a few times, making sure you give yourself some you know, breaks in between to allow your voice to relax, make sure you're breathing right, all those things. Paying attention to every little detail, the more and more you do it, the more and more you're going to remember what it feels like to do it right. So let's see what I wrote down here. I said, no matter how many times you don't get something right, when you do, your body remembers how it feels. If you warm up well and practice exercises and the difficult passage of songs with patience, forgiving yourself for not already being better than you feel you are, you will improve. I want to return to that. So that's one of the most important things I can ever tell any student of anything ever. The only way to truly learn something is to let go of the fact that you don't already know it. Is to forgive yourself for not having learned. If you're like, oh, I was supposed to learn that in in eighth grade, or I was supposed to learn supposed to learn that junior year, and I should have paid attention. And you know, oh, I. It doesn't matter. It's over. That's gone, and that's okay, because the information is still there. The wisdom, the knowledge, all of those things are still there. All you have to do is be willing to approach it as a beginner, to be able to pro approach it. Each thing, wherever you are, approach the next thing as a beginner at that. And if you are patient with yourself and you are humble and you take your time and you really work on something until you feel like you, you notice improvement and you notice what the, what's happening through the practice, it will get better. You will get better at whatever it is that you're trying to do. Not just singing. I'm talking about any instrument, any, any practice, any, any skill in the world. Okay? So... Um, what did I say here? I said, uh, the more times you do something that's difficult, the more times you'll get it right. It may take a lot of times to be as good as you want, but that's up to you. Now you know how to get there. All right. So it's, it, it, yes, there's a lot that we deal with personally. Okay. We're going to go into that right now. All right. So before we, before we actually go into that, actually, let's talk about just, um, we talked about emulating your heroes and the people that you that you really love. Well, let's remember also that the people that are out there whose songs we hear and whom are at the top of their game have done the work and really have are are, are the most capable at their craft of the people you know that that are out there. That's why we've heard of them. Okay, so everybody has a different natural range to their voice. This is something that I want to bring up. 
Um, some people can sing up to a certain note comfortably, some people can sing up much higher than that, some people can ding, sing down to a certain note comfortably, and some people have a very low voice. And of course, for different genders, it's different. All right, so we can expand our range. Everybody can, can expand their range a little bit through exercises. That's part of what the exercises are for. We can train our voices. It's just like training any other muscle. There are muscles in the throat, and we're training them to work for us in the way that we want them to. And we can do that, okay? However, it's really helpful to, if you like a song by an artist and you're trying to sing that song and it, it just, you're straining. You're just not really able to get to the high note or to the low note or whatever it is, that passage or those fast passages or whatever it is. I recommend learning how to transpose the song, find the music in a lower key, and or pick a different song in a lower key to start with and build up to the song that's that's more difficult find something that's in your comfortable range and learn how to sing like you in your comfortable range learn how to use the voice that you have the best way that you can really learn how to get your point across and get your message and get your story across that way and work on your exercises and work on your vocal uh, you, you, you know, your, the, the, the things that are difficult for you, like I said, the, you know, at the threshold of your technique, and you will continually improve, and ultimately, then you can go back and you can try that song that's a little more difficult again. You have to build up to certain things. We, we're not all just magically going to be experts at something that we want to do, um, and really no one is, as much as we, they, that may be the story that we're told, um, and some people are incredible. They really are, and I'm very, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Some people you just can't take away from how amazing it is what they're able to accomplish sometimes in, you know, early on in their life, and kudos to them. But each of us is on our, at our own pace and on our own journey, and so we all need to sort of accept ourselves. We need to push ourselves. We need to have goals, but we also need to accept where we are in order to make any progress at all. All right, so let's see. Um... I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, go back to the emotional journey thing that we were talking about, okay? Because um, we often, all, all of us, often confuse our singing ability and the praise that we get for it and the, the admiration and the, the approval of others. We, we, we confuse that and how we feel about it at any given time, whether we feel we're good or we feel we're bad. We, we confuse that with our self-worth and with our happiness. Of course we do. Of course we do. The, the human voice is the most personal instrument there is. It's actually part of our body and it's our body vibrating and it's the only thing that comes, you know, from, from purely just us with no other tools, okay? Uh, this is natural. It's natural to feel, um, to, to, to feel this, this, this sort of attachment to, you know, your self-worth with your singing ability. It's natural, but the best singers approach their vocal capacity as learning and mastering an instrument. It's the same thing any, as any other instrument. And you have to recognize that you have to learn how to interface with the instrument. You have to learn the physical capabilities in order to make the instrument work. And then you have to learn all of the music and you have to have the things in your ear. That's another thing that I talk about for singers. One of, another thing that's very important is you really want to know what it is that you're going to sing. You want to hear it in your ear. You want to hear the music. You want to know the music in yourself so that when it comes out, it's you just telling the story. It's not you thinking about it. You understand what I'm saying? You really want to like, you know, learn all the words before you get up on stage and sing a song. Don't be up on stage with a script like me. Uh, I had a lot I wanted to say and I wanted to make sure I covered it all. All right, so in conclusion, all right, if you can do this, if you can really approach learning how to use your voice like a musical instrument and really I don't want to say separate from the emotional journey because the emotional journey is a, very, is a very important part of the performance but if you can separate those things in terms of your development and say okay this is my technique this is my skill this is how my, I use my voice and this here is my intention and what I'm trying to say and this is uh, my vocal you know writing journey and there are so many things that go into uh, or even just my song discovery not everybody has to write songs S singing other people's songs Everybody can sing every song like themselves. It doesn't matter who wrote the song. All right? So if you can do that, it will give you a sense that there's a pathway to improvement, that you always know how you can get better. 
and you don't have to feel stuck. And ultimately, if the only person, once again, that you need to please or to impress in order to know that you're giving something real of yourself that they can't get anywhere else to your audience. And that's the true goal. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you want to talk about this, if you have anything else you want me to make a video on, please comment and let me know. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Take care.